Well, I think it's time to begin. I'm going to give a presentation of the um, OpenBSD remote exploit. Uh, my name is Alfredo Ortega. I work as, as an expert writer for core security. Um, sorry about my pronunciation. This uh, time of the morning is a little unnatural for me to be awake for. So um, let's start. Please, nobody hack my machine. Why I'm doing the presentation? Thank you. Um, okay, this, this presentation is about how uh, we found and exploit a uh, bug in the OpenBCD oper operative system. The um, OpenBCD op operative system is a very secure operative system. It only has two remote exploits, no or public. And uh, I'm gonna speak. I'm gonna try to 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 explain how we found bugs, how, how we found this bug, and how we exploited it. Okay, let's start. First, we're gonna speak how I found this bug. My boss gave me an, an assignment a few months ago to research a. Uh, known a patched bug of OpenBSD. Um, it's, it was listed as a reliability fix, and we really didn't know much about it, so we must start research on how to reproduce it. Um, it was a, in fact, it was a Daniel of service. It's not, it was not exploitable, so we started to try to reproduce, to, to craft an uh, attack for this exploit, for this uh, bug, sorry. So uh, the bug, in fact, was an infinite loop in the kernel. An infinite loop caused the kernel to stop working, and every process in the operating system stopped working too. So uh, it really was very much info. Let me see about it. I started uh, to write a program call it, like you know, a fuzzer. Fuzzer, a fuzzer is a little program to send malformed data through the system to try to break it. It was a very primitive fuzzer. Let's see, here. It was a very primitive fuzzer. It was almost manual fuzzer. Um, its purpose was to, to craft a couple of packets and to send it to the system. Um, the, we know that the fail, the bug, was a was in the ICMP protocol, so the fuzzer is what's sending uh, malformed ICMP packets. But uh, in a couple of days, the fuzzer starts to break the system. Um, I was thinking that I was found the fail, the fail, the failure. Um, it, it was uh, in uh, fragmented ICMP packets. And when we send the packet to the OpenBCD system, the system just broke. Broke apart, just crashed, and I say, well, I, look at me, I found the bug. The bug was not an infinite loop like it was uh, listed in the website. So it was very strange. It, say, it doesn't seem the same bug, it seems another bug. This is very common when, when you are developing an exploit, you uh, almost, um, Oh, yeah. A lot of time you find an, a new vulnerability because you try to work, you are trying to break the system to find an exploit if there is not much info. So the system was crashing, and I say, okay, I found the, the bug. I download a new copy of OpenBSD, the, the fresh copy, the, the patch, and test the, act, the, uh, test the attack against, against the new OpenBSD kernel, the latest, latest OpenBSD kernel and the exploit was working. So I say, how is this? The OpenBSD kernel was patched, and the exploit was working anyway, so this was a new vulnerability. We really didn't know what kind of vulnerability was this. Is was a Daniel of service, or this was exploitable. We just listed as possible uh, exploitable vulnerability. In the start, we uh, only get a Daniel of service. We send a couple of packets, and the OpenBSD crashes in a new way. 
uh, every OpenBCD kernel crash it in this way. We say, we say, okay, we got a uh, new vulnerability. We reported it to OpenBCD, and the OpenBCD team um, say uh, it's okay. It's a new vulnerability. We're gonna patch it, and they patch it. It is okay. I, I must say that I really don't know, I am not an expert on the OpenBSD kernel, I'm just an expert writer. Maybe some from uh, the OpenBSD team know a lot uh, better than I the, the memory structures and, and uh, the internal functioning of the OpenBSD kernel. So, uh, so this time we got a new Daniel of service. Uh, I was patched in a couple of days and it's okay. We started researching if this was exploitable or not. Because I, I was thinking that this was really exploitable. OpenBSD team was saying that it really was not exploitable. So, for, um, what is the reason that the OpenBSD kernel crashed? It was because of a buffer overflow. In the kernel, we got these structures named mbuffs that are used to store network packets. It's, it's a very common structure used in a lot of Unix systems. Um, so we, I send two packets, or one of the fragmented packets, overflow uh, these structures. We can see here the really one packet should fit in just one of these structures. But the packet was overflowing and was writing all over, uh, all over the, the, the buffers. These buffers are, in, are implemented in a linked list. So if we overwrite, oh, sorry, if we overwrite all the linked list when the, the OpenBCD kernel was trying to, to, to act, to, to process that linked list in any way, it crashed because the, the, the header of these packets were overflowed, were overflowed with garbage, with, uh, with uh, data that I was sending to it. It crashes in, in a lot of ways, but uh, I'm interested, in one of the ways that it crashed was in this function, that is called here, the M3M function. When the operating system crash, it shows a stack trace of the crash, where it crashed, how it crashed, and much of the time, this function, this function was, crash, was crashing. The M3M function is a function used to free these buffers. So I say, it is strange. It's crashed in a free function uh, in, in a lot of exploit. When you got a system that crash in a free function, it's a very positive signal that the bug is exploitable because uh, this function does, a, does a, we, what we call an unlink of the buffers. Is these buffers are, as I was saying, in a linked list. This function free one of these buffers and exchange some pointers to make one of the buffers available again, but these pointers that link it, that are linked to these buffers are being overflowed. So the function crashed. And I started to, to research on this function to see if I can exploit it. Here. The OpenBSD kernel is open source, and I really got the C source, the, the source code of the kernel, but I am more used to, to see in this way, to see the, to see the disassembly of the, of the functions. This is a disassembly of the function that was crashing, the M3M function, like we can see here. M3M, this function was crashing. Oh. Where was crashing? Was crashing in the block marked with the yellow. We can see here that this was crashing here. This is the beginning of the function, and the function was advancing some time. It will reach this block, and we crashed exactly here. So I started to, to research why it was crashing there, because this it's making some operation with pointers here. We can see that the AC register, uh, well, this is, if I'm going gonna, gonna to to clarify this, this is uh, in Pentium and 32 bits. 
All this exploit is, was researched in a 32-bit machine, Pentium. OpenBSD run in a lot of machines, but we researched all, we, this research was only in 32 bits. So we can see this is 32-bit assembly. We can see here that the function first is used to free a block. The block is put in the AEC register, a pointer to the back, a pointer to the to the buffer is is placed in the AC register. So then everything that is uh, referred to this register is in fact referring to the buffer. So here is exchanger exchange two pointers of this buffer are moving a pointer with this buffer into a register and then exchange it, exchange it with, with another. This is called a run link. This is, with this operation, we free um, uh, a buffer of the linked list. And we, because of this pointer was being overwriting, this function, in fact, was trying to write in, every, in any place, in, in a place in the memory that did not exist. So it caused a fault, and the kernel was stopping. I was trying to reach this function. I was, so I say, this is commonly exploitable with an operation that is called a um, four-byte four -byte copy. With this operation, we can send in a specially crafted pointers here, and con because we can control these pointers, we can cause a four-byte four byte write everywhere in the memory. We can write uh, a value that we control in every place in the memory that we want. It's a commonly technique, maybe the mirror, mirror write or a four-byte write. It's used in user mode. This time it's in kernel mode, but it's the same, the same instruction. I was trying to reach this block with controller data so we can, I can exploit it. And then, and, uh, after a lot of work, I realized that a little up, a little at the side, let's say, of this function was another couple of instructions that are doing a little strange thing. First, it copies some pointer from, from the buffer, from the, that, from the buffer that I was sending, to a register, EAX register, and then we can see the arrow here, does some things, it does some, some things, and then call to this register. First, copy from the buffer to the register, and then call this register directly. But this register was controlled by, by, by us because we are sending the data here. And then the system is calling all data. So we directly, we can, we, we can uh, modify the execution, the execution pointer of the kernel. We, we can make the kernel to jump wherever we want it to. Very easily, we only must place a pointer in this position of the buffer. We remember that the AC register was pointing to our packet, so in the packet we put the pointer and the system jumped to our pointer. That's simply of that. It's simply. And much easier than this, that this way of, of, uh, of exploiting the system. This way we can write anything on the memory, but really we didn't, want, didn't know where to write or what to write. But using this couple of instructions here, we can make the system jump wherever we want with a simple pointer. So I was trying to reach these instructions. It was a little, little difficult, but it was 